What's up, Martin? What's up, W. Krusselberg? W. Krusselberg? Yeah. It sounds like, uh, sounds legit. It does. Hey, Shram. Hey, Brandon. Sounds wealthy. Maybe, maybe. Krusselberg. Maybe he's an investor. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's funny how we can just like (laughs) make total random ass judgments just by somebody's username. So we did get a Supremo or something. I didn't check, but I saw that it went up one. So woo. I just just looked at it to post this, but I didn't check who it was, so I don't know. Was it you, Krusselberg? William. What's up, William? William. Oh, William. I I sent your package, by the way. Perfect. Excelente. Yep. <laughs> Brandon says, how have I not noticed the Louise ears behind you before? It's been there for a while, yeah, actually. Dude. Yeah, it has. Bob's Burgers fanatics. Can everyone hear okay? Yeah, we Is do this love thing some on? Bob's Burgers. Hey, Natasha. What's up, Natasha? How's I... everything going with baby? What's up, Sable? What's up, Sable? Brandon, everybody, Natasha. This is a story that you guys requested. Is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, no. Is this the poop cruise from hell? No, it's not. Why haven't you done it? I don't know, man. I just, I don't want to ruin cruises for me. Like the names. I mean, we've never gone on one. I know. And then you won't. You you never, and it will. You know the story. So what if I ever just said like, I really want to go on a cruise and then, like, that's the way to get it all out, you know? That is, like, that is named by the media. That is the name they've given this. The car- It was a carnival cruise. The poop cruise from hell. That's the name they gave it. So what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> Poo everywhere. <laughs> Tonight we're going to Japan. Okay. Good guesses for everybody who did get that right. And your sister was living there for a while. Yes, she was. All right. I'm going to get on the Google Earth. I'll put all these photos on talkmirror.com, which I haven't done in like two weeks. Mm -hmm. (laughs) What is wrong with me? I'm leaving you guys on the hook, man. If you're new here or watching this, I'm really good with pronouncing things. Excellent. The best. So we're going to Mayakoji Village. All right. And this is in Japan. We're actually going, this is supposed to be a mountainous region. So this is about where we're going tonight. This is a very small village. It is in Tamura County. Yeah. And I'm going to say what prefecture it is, which tell us what a prefecture is. You know that. I do not know that. Yeah, you do. No. It's like another way for a district. It's oh, like okay. An, another word for a district. I mean, I appreciate that you just assumed that I knew what you were talking about. Well, we, we've we done episodes before. Uh, it's been a while. All right. We're actually going to... What's up, Daniel? What's, What's up, up, Lauren? Daniel? Just making sure I shout out everybody. So this is where we're going to, Tamura City. Okay. It says Fukushima, which is what? Fukushima. What, what did brain. you just ta- call me? <laughs> Go Fukushima yourself. Fukushima. Fukushima. The nuclear power plant. Ah, I was like, ah, thank you. (laughs) Yes. Yes. I should have got that. That melted down like 2011. Natasha got it. Thank you. (laughs) So here is where we're going right here, but specifically where we're going. And there's there's photos, which I can show you of the location. But to explain this story better, this is 1989. So it was less city here. Mm -hmm. And we're actually going to a small village in the mountains. So I couldn't find the exact location, but it is in these mountains right here. And it is a school. So it is kind of remote. It's like a high school where teachers can live if they want. So there were Mm -hmm. teachers living at this school. And I'm thinking it's because it's so far out of reach remote yeah. that they just stay there like during the week or whatever but they they have their own dorms the teachers have their own dorms okay and there's also shared bathrooms oh god speaking of which have you ever seen a japanese toilet no but my sister has talked to me about oh, the japanese toilets oh, tell us about it <laughs> so it is uh um even today it is not common to not actually see a a toilet in public facilities it's basically like a hole in the ground type situation where you got there's like a bar maybe or something where you gotta like kind of hold on to and squat down all right do you want me to show you a photo of a clean one or with um, one with shit in please it? A, cl- a clean one please because it's pulling up here <laughs> let me show you <laughs> that's what pulled up oh god but I, this is- can you change that <laughs> This is the toilet right here. So it's uh, to <laughs> you. Squat I mean, can and, you um, imagine so. if like you were really tired? <laughs> you're like, oh, what if you worked out? It was leg day, and you did like a hundred squats, and you yeah. like you're squatting, and you fall over. <laughs> 
So this is a big problem in America. Japanese women, I, I'm guessing men don't have these, but Japanese. No, they do. Well, I mean, they, they may have a urinal as well. Oh, well, Japanese people that are accustomed to this, and I'm, I'm not making fun of you. No, that's just their, what they're, yeah. But this is what so. you do over here and you, you mess up <laughs> the toilet and the whole freaking wall <laughs> and everyone. Uh, Got it. They're trying to stand. Like, yeah, they try to on stand on it because they don't know how to do it. But this is the Japanese toilet, basically. You know. <laughs> Dang. So there is no. If this I, is this I, is the toilet is there is not uh, or this style because they do have like other uh, Western style toilets. I guess I don't know. And um, but this is not like you can't just kind of bring the newspaper. You can't bring your phone. Like this is strictly business. All right, I got a question. <laughs> you can't do anything else. Yeah, <laughs> this is takes all balance and effort, honestly. And, all right, so well, let me go back to the picture. Like, where do you? All right, we're talking. Let's talk about the we. Let's talk about number one. We for a guy. <laughs> like, is there not splashback from this number one? I mean, do they gonna, not? Do they have urinals also, or just? You told me that this was it. That's what I, you said. I know so. at, least, at least like a lot of a lot of public restrooms they they have toilets like this. I mean, in a in a female restroom, you have like there is no urinal option, obviously. So I don't know if, but, but actually, I know um, when she was potty training her son Luke, they do teach like uh uh that like that was part of the process was like teach him how to use it peeing. So I don't know, maybe. It it kind of looks like a little, um, like a rowboat. Oh, so they do. Oh, look, pee? this guy fell in. <laughs> Caution! Caution! I mean, what if you're? What if you've got like bad legs or muscle problems? You know, I mean, that's the hindrance. Anyway. Well, I guess you just hold it, man. You know. Anyway, is anyone on live chat ever used one of these? And this is relevant to the story, so don't just think I'm just <laughs> doing this to to, to entertain myself. <laughs> Uh, anyone on live chat do this? PP or poo poo in there? <laughs> you <laughs> sound like <laughs> a anybody pee-pee four pee-pee? year old <laughs> talking about bodily functions. Tonight we're going to 6 p.m. February 28th, and this is 1989. This is in the Maya Koji Village in Tamura District, and a 23 year old teacher finds herself as i just told you these teachers live in this little commune Mm -hmm. this is kind of in the mountains so they live there during the week or even permanently okay they each have their own little dorm but they do a shared bathroom and how many of those toilets are there i'm not sure how many there are but i'm I'm guessing or or like a ratio one toilet to every like 10 people i don't know this is seems relevant to the story honestly didn't didn't think anyone would ask that (laughs) (laughs) because i mean you're you're the one that indicated that this is bathroom related. Like, is, does somebody die? I'm so, what is happening? This teacher who is unnamed is a female. She goes to the bathroom. This is at 6 p.m. at night. Now, I want you to remember this is February 28th. This is cold. Apparently, winter in Japan gets extremely cold, freezing. Add on the fact that you're also in the mountains. Mm-hmm. It's very cold. Okay. So this 23-year-old teacher who has had a long day teaching, she's going to do number one because girls don't do number two. So <laughs> she goes into the bathroom and it's dark outside. Mm-hmm. It's, it's pitch black outside. And the toilet is not connected to the room inside. It's actually outside a little bit, almost like an outhouse. Okay. And I'm going to show you the actual toilet. But how it works is you have this squat toilet. Right. Like I showed you. Yes. So the squat toilet is in a little building, an outhouse, Uh so to speak. The waste goes down this tube and then this pipe, which there is a perpendicular pipe attached to that that goes kind of far out and on the other side of the building so it doesn't you know smell and then that's where they can drain it or you know get the septic out from the other side behind the building i'm going to show you that but she gets into this little building to go winkle and it's dark outside she can't see there's no lights there and she looks down in this toilet and what does she see a foot (laughs) A foot. I don't know. Ah, oh, that's a good guess. Actually, this on, is talk murder to me, not talk potty to me. So, actually, on live chat, let me know. Um, what does she see? A head, a head in a toilet, a female head, a baby. All right, that's it. You said, Mister <laughs> Mister Anki. <Hanky. laughs> <laughs> 
Ah, <laughs> oh, that was good. That was good, Lauren. Good job on that one. Uh, all right. <laughs> so she looks down in there, and I'm going to read this. This is her exact quote translated from Japanese. When I go home to the teacher's house next to the elementary school where I live, I go into the bathroom and casually look inside and see something that looks like a shoe. So she sees a shoe down there and she's like, okay, there shouldn't be a shoe down here. Okay. Number one, it'd be kind of hard to stuff a shoe down there. But number two, like why would the shoe be down there anyway? And she may have saw more than a shoe, but from her response to the police, she said she just saw a shoe at first. Uh huh. Surprised. I went around the outside sump and the lid was open. And when I looked inside, I could see human legs. So there was human legs inside. Legs. legs. Yeah. Legs. Legs. You know. You got- yeah. I know what legs are. Thank you very much. I may not know military time, but. She screams. Ah! And then she runs. Everyone's waking up. The vice principal wakes up. What is going on? There's someone in the toilet. The teachers are all riled up. The cops are called. Only one cop shows up because this is kind of far out. Mm -hmm. And then the excavator shows up because they're going to have to break the toilet open. And then a firefighter shows up. I'm going to show you the toilet. This is from a Japanese newspaper about this story in 1989. This is basically what this 23-year-old teacher saw. Oh, God. It's like the Nutty Putty Cave. (laughs) The Nutty Putty Cave. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Okay. Oh, my God. What you're looking at here, this area, you see that's kind of has this background on it. How is is that the toy? How? Just listen. This is the inside of the outhouse. And this is the squatty potty. Right. All right. How in the world is someone getting in there? You see. That's 20 centimeters. 20 centimeters, which is about eight inches. So a shoe could fit in there, but it would have to be kind of forced down there. A shoe. Yeah. That's about eight inches going down. And this is where she saw the shoe right here where this guy's head is. You see right here. Now, she most likely saw more than a shoe because, you know, I mean. Based on that positioning. Based on the positioning. Yeah. She probably saw a head. But this. This is the the outline of the toilet. You definitely want to see this toilet. So go to talkmer.com. <laughs> you do want to see this toilet. Wow. Okay, okay, okay. So now that puts it in perspective. So what did I tell you? So it goes down here, right? And all the tinkle comes down here. And then they suck it up from outside here. Right. All right. But this is real small, is it not? Yeah. 20 centimeters for the, the squatty potty and then 36 centimeters, which is How are they get- 12 inches. So did they did they go in from the back instead of well, t- down the what, toilet? Describe what you're looking at here. I mean, OK, so it's almost like a U-shaped pipe with with one of the U's is wider than the other, you know, 36 and 20. And the person is in the fetal position, like at the bottom of the U. And how in the world would a a human being get down there? How? Because you can't just like get in feet first under there. You don't think he John Jones did? Head first? Yeah. But the way, so he would have had to go in from the back in order to do that. Like not from the toilet side, right? This is open right here. So he could have done that. I got to give credit to this channel. I think it's a news channel. It's all in Japanese. I think it's called SBC. There was a Japanese American YouTuber that translated it because I tried to watch the whole video and even Google Translate didn't really work for me. Mm -hmm. But this team of investigators investigated this case because they were wondering how did this guy get down here and they recreated the experiment with the exact dimensions. So that's what you're going to see now is and this will give you a better perspective of exactly to scale of what you're looking at here. That's the exact size. It's two dimension. Okay, so the hole that's in the back of the. This is two dimension. Yeah, this is scaled. Exactly. Three dimension. This is a three dimensional representation. Yeah, but it's it's two scales. Two scale. Yes. Okay. so that's interesting. So the hole that's like on the outside of the outside house it's not as um lo- like there's not as he- big of a distance as i was imagining between the two so if there's a u you know if it's a u the the distance between the top tops is pretty close together let's back up just for a second here all right and then we'll go back to this we started with the teacher 
23 years old. She goes, she sees, she goes in this porta potty. She looks down. She sees a shoe. She goes out to the other side and looks down the, the hole and she sees the human legs. That's where we're at right now. The cops are called. A policeman gets out there. He tries to pull this man who is obviously dead. He is not responding. Okay. And he is in rigor mortis. And the cop talks about how he could tell. As you saw in the photo, the man's legs were were cradled up. He's like in the fetal position. Right. The cop couldn't bring this man out because it's just an awkward angle. So when she said she saw the legs, was she looking at it from the back, from the outside? From the outside. Oh, that makes more sense. I was thinking she was looking down. Yeah. uh, When she was trying to squat and and saw him. And I was like, wouldn't she see his head? Okay, that makes a lot more sense. I'm with you now. The excavator gets there, who is just someone that police called. Hey, we need to, we we need someone to bust up this sump. Apparently, there's a dude down here in this sump. We need to. Bust <laughs> and they're him like, up. you mean a do? No, a dude. <laughs> <laughs> do. Can you imagine getting that? I would be like, you know what? <laughs> and I quit. No, yeah. no. <laughs> it was already bad. Oh, oh man, it was already a shitty job. Yeah. The fireman gets there. Did you ever have a fire fireman called on you when you were a kid for doing something? No. My sister did. She, um, she, I think she was like two or three, but she stuck her fingers down the shower drain holes and they got stuck. So you know how like when you're in the shower, there's like the the drain. She like decided to stick her fingers down there and they got stuck and my mom had to call the fire department. They had to like saw the drain away from her fingers because they couldn't get them out. Why didn't- she was scared of men for a while because <laughs> they were like these big firemen that came she's like two or three I don't know somewhere around that age Jesus and they Christ. had to like you know take a little like dremel saw and very gently cut her fingers out of it the person in the toilet was already dead although it was midwinter the corpse was shirtless he held a jacket he was wearing close to his chest his knees were bent And he tilted his face slightly to the left. So this man was shirtless. Did you hear that? I did. Not only shirtless, so he had his jeans on and he had a jacket. So this is a better picture here. This blue thing is his jacket. Okay. All right. The fireman gets there and with the police's help, with the cops' help, they both pull him out. How in the heck do they get him out without break? They didn't have to break the pipe either? They did. Oh. To, to get him all the way out. Yeah, but they got him halfway out by themselves. And the research I did on this case... This man had been sitting in human waste in shit for four days. And the paper said that he himself was full of it. So when you die, your mouth goes open. And since you're already in human shit and people are pissing and doo-dooing. Using the restroom. For two days while you're dead because they think he died on the 26th. The teacher found him on the 28th. So two full days of using the bathroom, you know, and this guy is this this guy, this head, this man's head is in direct, direct line of sight, direct line of sight. So his body was was bulged out, which is why they had so much trouble getting him out, because he was bloated, not just from the gases escaping his body because of death, but because of all the feces and urine in his body Got from it. other people. He was Appreciate just sucking it in. He was sucking it in. Isn't that nuts? The paper was very clear that he was full of shit. <laughs> I want to tell you that. <laughs> Literally. Tell me what you think so far. Um, there were some interesting guesses on the live chat as to why he was there. One said, was it the Yakuza that like murdered him and put him there? <laughs> Yakuza. Another said, was he hiding? That's a good guess, the Yakuza. Yeah. All right, but but the Yakuza doesn't just go after anyone unless he has a gambling debt. Well, was, and yeah, I, you don't know. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I didn't tell you the guy yet about who he is. So that is a good guess. But that is also very creative of the Yakuza, you know, because usually they just cut your head off and roll it down the street or something. Because think about it. Someone stuffed them down there. They have to put them down there. Mm -hmm. And so they get all this feces and stuff on them, too. 
It reminds me a lot of Septic Tank Sam. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that one. I mean, it also reminds me of the Nutty Putty Cave. Yeah. So you think... So, so was he alive All right. Well, when he was put down there? Okay, those are all good guesses. I wanted you guys to, like, guess and that stuff before we get to the autopsy, because the autopsy is telling. So was he... Uh, did I miss that? Was he dead when they when he was put well, down there? Well, I'm about to tell you. did he die down there? Well, we're about to find out. Okay. Let's talk about the autopsy. At least twice to wash the body. Now, the medical examiner, once he got there, he immediately transported this victim to the nearby hospital and they they washed him down at least twice, maybe three times. They had to do a full wash on this guy, which... You know, could wash away evidence, but he was covered. So they washed him, cleaned him, and then they started the autopsy. The official cause of his death was, quote, freezing and thoracic circulatory failure. So the circulatory failure means he was in the fetal position for an abnormally long time. But the main cause of death was hypothermia. Like I said, it's February 24th when he got in there. He was found the 28th. Winter in Japan, especially in the mountain areas, is extremely extremely cold. This man didn't have a shirt on. He was cradling his shirt. He didn't have a shoe on. His shoe was in front of his head, which is another mystery of how it got there. This man's other shoe was over a mile away in a creek. What? This is where the second shoe was. That is interesting to me. Was he running from something? Lost a shoe along the way? Okay. I want to say, if you're if you're going to expect me to give you a solid answer, this is technically an unsolved case. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to break your heart. I need closure. <laughs> <laughs> this shit is unsolved. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. But his second shoe was a mile away. Wow. Okay. Now, the most important thing I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to have you guess again. Okay. The autopsy was hypothermia, basically. The decedent left from his father's house on the 24th. We know who this man is. And he told his father that he was going to run errands, and somehow he ended up in this sewage pipe. There were no injuries to his body, just minor scrapes on the elbows and knees, which was probably from going down into the tube. There was no blunt force trauma. There was no bruising on the head. His wrists weren't slashed. His throat wasn't cut. It didn't look like he got beat up with a baseball bat and stuff down there. So far, it, it is looking as if this man voluntarily decided to travel into the deep void <laughs> <laughs> known as the women's shithole in Japan and sit there. So now knowing that information, Nicole, and I'm going to read this one little thing. The dead man's body was naked, even though it was winter. Folded up and clenched tightly to his chest was his sportswear jacket with hood attached. So now do a, another guess. Why would he take his shirt off? Here's a photo, a recreation image of what, if this man went down voluntarily, of what it would have been like if, if he did that. And, and I'll put all these on talkmore.com, but this is the, uh, that's what it would look like if this man went down voluntarily. Now, what you don't see here is the shoe. The shoe that the teacher saw was in front of his head up here. Mm -hmm. So how did his shoe get in front of his body if he went down this way? How did the shoe end up here? That's weird. Mm -hmm. But this is what it would look like if someone went down this thing right here. Keep in mind, he was covered in, in excrement. excrement. He was covered in excrement and they had a wash them thoroughly at least twice so they may have washed some vital evidence off but with all that in mind do you have any change of opinion well let me read you a couple of the the guesses sable had a couple really good ones and brandon is in agreement sable had asked was he homeless um and brandon asked was he homeless and maybe trying to get warm Lauren counters, well, that wouldn't make sense because he took his shirt off. Like, why would he not have a shirt on? Um, any poor history of mental health, Alyssa Lamb vibes. Natasha asked, was he high? Sable asked, was he hallucinating or did he have like rabies or something? It's rabies? Oh, shit. I don't know. That's a really good, really good. That's guesses. a good theory. Yeah, they're all really good. But rabies, I haven't heard that one. That's really good. This is the actual photo of the pipe here. This is the 
one here. So I know I showed you recreations, but this is it right here uh, from what I found. So that's it. I just want to show you the, the actual photo mm -hmm. of it. All right. Now let's talk about this guy because we do know who he is. Okay. And this guy was actually a, a well-respected man, 26 years old. This is him right here. Looks like a younger gentleman, maybe maybe in his 20s. Um, In this photo, he's like, you know, clean cut closely shaved, has like his hair, you know, done. He's wearing a, you know, collared shirt and tie. So I'm cer I'm certainly not necessarily getting homeless vibes from this gentleman. Yeah, that's a good point. So 26, he doesn't look homeless. At least in this photo, I don't know, maybe his circumstances changed. I don't know. And I want to say the homeless thing, that's a really good guess. But where we're at, if you're homeless, you don't want to be this far out. You'd be more in the city. Mm. But to yeah. get to get warm, I would imagine that would be a pretty good place to get warm. But to take your sweater off. I mean, but you're going to take get warm in a in a pipe full of excrement. I mean, I'm not. I'll stay at the I, Holiday I know, Inn. Like there are other there are other probably more more likely things. I mean, yeah, he could have went do. into the school. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, like uh, that to, to me, that one. I don't know. I'm not I'm not I'm not totally aligned with that one. I'm, we do know his identity. Twenty six year old Kano Nayoyuki, five foot seven, healthy. His family said he had a good shoulder length, which the, the Japanese shoulders are a little slimmer than us burly Americans. So for his shoulder length, let me show you the image again. They said his was a little bit wider than a normal Japanese male. Interesting. Okay. 36 centimeters, 14 inches, 36 centimeters. Oh, centimeters. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 14 inches. So like width? Shoulder Yeah, yes. That pipe is 14 inches. So this man, his shoulders would have to be smaller than 14 inches. Right. Er, but that yes, does yes. that look like it's 14 inches? No. That looks like a tight ass squeeze. Yes. It looks very painful to go down in there. Yes. You know. Because the photo I showed you earlier, it had the dimensions on it, 36 for the big pipe and then the 20 centimeters for the other one. But he did get down there. That's the thing. Nutty putty cave guy we got know, down there. We know he's he got down there. Did he get down there himself, though, or was he uh, helped? He lived about 10 minutes away from the village. He told his father he was going to run errands. That was February 24th. The father had called the police and he didn't come back because that's not like his son. His son has a, a great job. His son is well employed. And he was just going to run errands to the grocery store. And now he ends up in a, in a shit pipe. And not only that, his car was found near the location, a couple blocks away. Keys in the ignition, ignition running. Was he ashamed about something? Huh? Like, I don't know. Like, was he? So the, the keys were in the car, the car still running. He was missing a shoe. To me, it sounds like he's running away from something. What do you mean? Like running away from something? I don't know. Like he did something he was ashamed of or got, got in. So in he was trying the wrong person. So this is hiding, suicide. Maybe. Or he was hiding. I, 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 I'm with Lauren on her guests. There's there. another um, 3D image there. I mean, can't see. I can't think of a better hiding spot if you're running away from somebody. The police come out. They have to have an explanation for the community. What is it? Suicide. Where's the where's the female squat down at? There. Where where's his eyes at? Do they think this is like a peeping tom situation? They said that he was a peeping tom and he was trying to get a good bird's eye view of the feathers, <laughs> and that's where he ended up. I mean, fuck, 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 <laughs> the feathers. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> of the rooster. <laughs> So that is the official, not cause of death. The, the official cause of death is hypothermia, hypothermia, but the official motive is peeping Tom. But does that, does that. Someone did say as to just pooping Tom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for a title. Uh, yes. Also spoolunking. <laughs> <laughs> Those are good. This is very, uh, you know, Kendrick. Um, oh, the boy God. in the gym mat and Phoebe's Jesus. fall, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just bringing up all the vibes of these, yeah. these cases. Well, I know who suggested Phoebe's fall. They suggested first that, that it was a, uh, you know, the boyfriend or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it, as you remember now, I'm not saying it wasn't, I'm saying my research brought me 
to in, a different in, conclusion. In my personal opinion, that she was on the uh, the sleeping meds with alcohol because it's happened multiple times. Uh, women falling down shoots, mm-hmm. garbage shoots. Mm-hmm. So saying that, someone on live chat said drugs. Mm-hmm. So it could be a similar yeah. similar yeah, thing. Yeah, could be because it is winter time, and he did take his jacket off. No, yeah. I'm not saying. I mean, he could have been put down there. Yeah. Okay. I definitely. I. I'm not sure that the peeping tom thing holds holds a lot of merit, but I understand that that was what they they determined. Yeah. And you know what about the shoe? Like the the second shoe found so far away. That's weird, weird. to me. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about some theories. Theories number one is a pooping tom. <laughs> <laughs> that is that's pretty good who suggested that one pooping tom so let's go with the police he's a peeper all right i get it right martin you, was the first one that said pooping tom you want to see some of them feathers but do you i mean who would put themselves in that position just to get a look at that he's not a bad looking dude you know i mean if he's a voyeur it just seems so extreme yeah and that's a different fetish than just a peeping tom because i think the fetish also includes the excrement factor this kind of okay there you go that's a good that's a good i didn't think of that one so he's got a poop fetish yeah yeah, yeah. i didn't think of that one Another theory is, do you know what claustrophobia is? Yeah. Where you get scared of tight spaces. Yeah. So I didn't know that this was a thing until today, but there is a, the opposite of being scared of it. You could be a claustrophilia. Huh. Which is, quote, the love or arousal of enclosed tight spaces. Okay. So those are the uh, people, if you are Who one, love tiny houses. <laughs> tiny houses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that gives me so much anxiety. I can't even describe I was, it. I was going to say, just guys hiding in the closet. I don't fucking know. That's the first I've ever heard of it. Like, who gets hard from freaking hiding in the closet? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Somebody out there. And what did this guy do for a living? Uh, he he looked like he was maybe in finance uh, from that photo. Like, I mean, he had a, a desk job in that photo. Tie, collared shirt. Desk job, yes. This guy worked in a, an up and coming industry and also a a controversial industry at this time. This is 19, This is 1989. He worked at the nuclear power plant and he was actually on. And I don't know what he did. I could not find the translation to what he did, but he worked in the safety office. So, okay. hey, there's a crack in the in the reactor. You know, we got to shut this down. That's where he worked type of thing. So one of the the big theories here is he was maybe not stuffed down there, but maybe. But knew that something was wrong with it. But was being chased. So let's say someone's chasing him through the woods. He loses his shoe. He has people chasing him to kill him and he has nowhere else to go. That's where he hides. Mm-hmm. All right. I mean, I. I could see that. There's there's two reasons I'm bringing this up. Ten days before his death, there was a local election. The mayor who was previously the mayor was rerunning and trying to get support from, from all the locals. This is the mayor right here. And Kano, the man in the tube, had told one of his friends, his co-workers at the nuclear plant, that he is no longer supporting the mayor. This is ten days before. Because he found out the mayor was actually buying votes. Oh. Which is illegal. I'm not saying that that was why he died, but it is suspicious. Okay. So that is one reason. Yeah. Kano was also against nuclear power, even though he worked in the nuclear power plant. He thought it was very dangerous and he would, he would constantly bring up faults, things going wrong. You know, there's a potential leak in the reactor. He is in the safety office. What he says could shut down this entire industry. Do you remember that movie we watched, Three Mile Island? Yep. Okay. What did you notice about that movie? And I and I noticed this. If you if there was something that could go wrong, you better not say anything. Even mm-hmm. though shit could go wrong and kill everyone, for some reason you don't want to say anything. Because it's like you have these people. You remember that guy? He was running and people would break into his home and, and vandalize it. And yeah. he was scared out of his mind. He worked at the plant and he yeah. and he exposed some faulty 
machinery that the, that it was known that there were issues with exactly safety yeah and they were they not trying to kill him and that was yeah. here in america yeah yeah 100 percent. you're right let's go back to when they found him all right now this is on the same theory that it was a political assassination the man that got there second was the excavator he has this huge truck and this is him right here. This man in his big truck. He gets there second. But uh, looking up this man and what he, he does, he turns out his background. He is a huge supporter of the mayor and his vision of bringing nuclear power and it is just so crazy that he showed up so quickly in front of the incidents in front of the emt firefighter you know who gets the call right so if it was a nuclear power assassination what well, do you does that hold merit for you or not does this yeah it does like how much like uh, the way the more pe- more than the peeping tom more than the peeping tom yeah but what about the there's no injuries on them so if someone was going to stuff but, them down there they're gonna like they're gonna have to enough, shove them enough time had passed it it doesn't even need to be that he was shoved down there. He could have been hiding from someone and try to get down there to avoid. And then being he just murdered. couldn't get back up. Yeah. Well, why didn't why didn't he call out the next day? I mean, when there were women up there, they were they were pissing on his face. You understand that? Like his face was right in the well, hole. Maybe. I mean, if he didn't have a shirt on, they piss. He, it goes in their face. I understand that. But if why he, didn't he say, "Hey, I'm down. I, someone's I, down here." So if if it was depending on what it happened, like it's not like women are getting up in the middle of the night all the time to maybe to go to the restroom. So for two days? No, no, no. But if it was in, in February in the middle of the night, hypothermia can set in very quickly the medical examiner he came out and said that most likely he died on the 26th he went missing on the 24th the evening of the 24th so the whole the day of the 25th let's say he was running from someone the 24th that evening the 25th that whole day he is still alive yeah now i mean maybe he could have been dead i mean honestly do you really think the medical examiner put too much freaking effort in it this dude is covered Inside and out with human shit. And how accurate if they washed him, you know, multiple times and you know what I mean? Like could could does that have any flex? A few weeks before Kano's murder, one of his co-workers noticed a strange anomaly in one of the nuclear reactors. Okay, but a few weeks before this man ended up in the sewage pipe, one of his co-workers noticed a strange anomaly, this cracking, something to do with vibrations in the nuclear reactor. It was vibrating too much, the isotopes or whatever, and it could potentially be catastrophic. So this co-worker, being in the safety office, did what he's supposed to do. He reported it. Three days later, this man jumped in front of a train. Two days after that, the nuclear leak came to fruition. The thinking is maybe maybe this Kano and the co-worker, they found something that was so fundamentally wrong with this power plant that it would have shut it down. Look what happened in 2011. It yeah. melted down. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. So, so and did this guy jumped in front of a train? Are the theories this, this is a nuclear physicist? Are the theories about this being a nuclear cover up new since the meltdown? No, or this were they was, theories for since the crime happened or the, the the incident occurred? All right, so this is the reason why this story got so much push is because the father knew his son. He knew his son wasn't a peeping tom because, like you said, you'd have to be number one a peeping Tom and you would have to voluntarily get into feces to do that. His son wasn't like that. The whole village knew his son. He was that there's a, a, a rare video footage of him on stage playing guitar and singing. It's beautiful. He was a poet. He was a musician, very talented, very respected. He was respected, loved. He is not the type of guy. He works at a nuclear power plant, yet he has his his own thoughts about safety and how this may not be the 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 way to the future. You know, he is an all around good guy. And now the father has lost his son, a peeping Tom, who is found in a shit pipe. Yeah. That is, what do you think that does to his whole world? Like he, his, the father. You want answers. And not only that, but people are looking at him like, what the fuck is wrong with your son? The whole village signed a petition. They got well over the number of people in the villages to reopen the case. And the reason the case is so, so, uh, 
known today as the father. The father would not let this go. But to be honest, you're facing these powerful forces, these this money, nuclear power. If you watch that th- three mile three mile island like we did, you'll see. You don't ma- oh, yeah. you don't say no, we got to shut the plant down. Like th- that is not a thing. Yeah. They would rather melt the plant down. Like Chernobyl. Yeah. Because Chernobyl was the same thing. Remember? All those people was like, we got to tell the whole city of Chernobyl. We got to we got to get these people out of there. No, everything's fine. Everything's fine. The freaking reactor is literally melting down and yeah. burning their ankles before they're like, OK, maybe maybe we're not fine. Maybe we're all fucked. You know, yeah. they just do not want to admit it because it would shut the whole thing down. And that and it is, impacts the f- whole future nuclear programs. Like, exactly. it's a big, like, it's a big deal. Exactly. Period. And totally. nuclear, nuclear power. I don't, I'm not a nuclear guy, but nuclear, I know from the science I read, is super efficient and it's super clean, except when it fucking melts down. You know what I'm saying? Like the power it generates is really efficient. It doesn't pull all, a lot of resources from from the earth. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, fossil fuels or whatnot. And it can make a lot of power. I mean, look at the nuclear bombs. That's a lot of power yeah. in something this big. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But when it does go wrong, it is catastrophic. And that's the problem with it. Anyway. And there, it was in that particular plant, you know? There is one other theory. The teacher. The f- who found them? So go back to that night. It's freezing cold. She's going to take a tinkle. It is dark outside. There's no lights out there. This is an outhouse. She looks down a dark pipe and sees a shoe. On the outside. No, no, no. She She's going to piss. She's going to use the bathroom. She squats down and she looks down there. She looks down a hole. It's like pitch black outside and she sees a shoe. It's a little out there, right? The shoe that was in front of this guy's head. In front head, of the head. Oh, oh, okay. Which was like, how did the shoe get? there number one like did he th- he would have to throw the shoe down not even to, to and to to even go back further the jacket was folded up nicely there's no room to fold up a jacket he, he didn't crawl down there with his jacket clenched to his arms he would have to throw the jacket down there it would get unfolded and you, you saw how tight the space is then the guy has to f- somehow fold his jacket up and put it on his arms how that's it, just kind of literally impossible to do yeah but what would the teacher have anything to do with that i'm confused it's kind of crazy. She just looked down there and saw a shoe. Who looks down there? I don't like, know. oh, let me see what's down there. I don't know. Maybe she was afraid that. In I this mean, dark. okay, it's an open pipe. So could could it be common for like critters to get down there? If if a human body can fit down there, I would be concerned that a critter could go down there and bite my butt. She sees the shoe, so she goes around to the the opening of the septic system and and w- lifts the lid and and tries to. Was she gonna fix it or pull something out? Like what? What is she? She's a teacher, a twenty three year old female. She's curious? Why would there she's be a shoe curious. down there at night? She's gonna go down there in the freezing weather. I don't and, know. And look down there. And try to access the situation. It's kind of weird, right? Now, it's also weird that that the man that was found in the pipe, 26-year-old Kano Nayayuki, it's also kind of weird that Kano Nayayuki actually knew the teacher. This specific teacher. He knew when she works. He knew her schedule. Were they dating? They weren't dating, but they were friends. The teacher, her fiancé, because she's about to get married to a guy named Watanabe, who is also the son of the mayor's election campaign manager. Campaign to reelect the president. <laughs> <laughs> Watergate. They knew Kano well. Kano, Kano knew the teacher. And not only that, this teacher had been getting harassing phone calls leading up to Kano's death. From and, Kano? And Kano, from, from what the popular belief is, recorded one of the calls and somehow traced it back to the original caller. And just before he was found dead, he figured out who was making these harassing calls to this teacher that found his body. And then all of a sudden, here he is. So the fiance, I, I don't know if the teacher would have have done it, but would the did the fiance do it? I mean, you tell me. I don't know. I mean, no one knows. I mean, this is unsolved. It's unsolved. The, the weird thing about this is number one, if the guy went down there himself, which is possible, we we know John Jones and stuff like that. I mean, we, we know that. All right, let's say he's a peeping tom. And that's him right there. How would his shoe get in front of his face? And why would he take his sweater off? And why was one of the shoes found a mile away in in the mud? And 
Yeah, I don't know. That that's all the information you got. So what what you think? That's all we got. What what are people thinking? Mm, well, Sable asked if they were having a love affair. Shram says friends with benefit. Bene shits. Sorry, needed to. Well, well. So we know that Kano was investigating these harassing phone calls to this teacher. Now I couldn't find the nature of the the calls or what they said or whatever. All I could find was she was about. About to be married to the the son of the election campaign manager for the mayor. With the mayor is pro nuclear, very pro nuclear. Not only that, but he is going to build more plants, get more people employed. He was also found that he was buying votes, and and Kano worked in the plant, but he had his reservations about whether it is the the right move forward. Nuclear was because he worked in the safety office, and he's starting to see these things. These things aren't adding up, not adding up in a nefarious way, but they're not adding up like uh, there's these weird vibrations that could could crack the reactors. And, you know, maybe we, you know, maybe this is just too much because it can melt down and kill the whole village, which has happened a lot. I mean, how many meltdowns have there been? A lot. Mm. More, yeah. You know, so I don't know. That's all. That's all I can get from Japanese translations. I'm sorry. <laughs> I- I don't know. Well, so what do you think it was? I mean, it doesn't matter what I think. I'm just here to tell you the story. Yeah, I know. But still, what's your opinion? I could I could definitely see the nuclear plant having something to the, do with the it. The fact that his shoe was a mile away in the, in the mud, it seemed kind of like he was running from something. Mm-hmm. I mean, but you would have to be, man, I, I would rather fight knowing I was going to die than to jump in a sewage pit. Maybe that's just me, but. I mean, if he was hiding, though, I don't know. I I know. That's a tough one. I mean, but there's no physical injuries to his body. Which is what makes me think it was voluntary. But, yeah. And and the shirt. So the sweater was folded neatly. So if someone was to stuff him down there, like how would they get the sweater clenched in his arms like that? That would literally be impossible. I see how the shoe they could go around the other side. But why would they put the shoe down? There? Why was the shoe in front of his head? Like that if doesn't he, make sense. He he went down head first, right? Yeah, he had to. He couldn't go down the the toilet. Well, side. maybe he tried to go down feet first and couldn't. And his shoe and fell then off. His shoe fell off because and the other oh, one fell off some way back. Kendrick Johnson stuff here, mm-hmm. maybe crazy. I don't know. I don't know. Crazy. Or maybe he was just a shit loving voyeur. Fuck. I mean, I don't think so. Peeping Tom. Pooping Tom. Peeing Tom. I don't know. I hope you like that. That was just that was a, crazy. Uh, there was just a short one, you know, just a little pick me up, you know, <laughs> poop me up. We're going to do nothing but poop related episodes <laughs> <laughs> from now on. <laughs> every, every episode this took a turn. Literally. How about this? Everyone on now, every episode that Nicole and I do for the next three weeks, I will promise you we'll have something to do with poop. You mean you mean the ones that we do during the week yeah. without Jen, so that I'm glad we don't have to put her through this. <laughs> Jealous of her. Um, yeah, That's I don't good. know. Yeah, Phoebe's falls the same way. Uh, Kendrick Johnson is another one. If you like this story, the freezer one, the freezer one, Kanika Jenkins. Mm-hmm. You know, how do these people get there? You never know. The Phoebe's Fall one's really interesting. I did a, a lot of research on that. That was really hard to do because the book I read was extremely biased towards it was a murder. Mm-hmm. And, and and you know, I was I tried to be non-biased, but I also wanted to prove some people wrong. <laughs> I'm such a dick. <laughs> You're entitled to your own opinion. <laughs> All right, we'll be on the Discord. So thanks for joining everyone. And I don't know. I'll see you next time. See ya. So good night, you lovely, lovely poopers.